Simplified Chaos, Episode 77. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to help you lead a more intentional life. This is Simplified Chaos. Wonderful friends, welcome to another episode of Simplified Chaos. This is Jillian, one of your hosts, and I'm with my husband and co-host, Nicholas. What's going on, folks? Hope everyone is doing well this week. Today is a Windows open kind of day for us here in June, which is pretty rare. So you might hear some background noise, but it was just too nice not to have the windows open here in our podcast studio, a.k.a. our bedroom. <laughs> but we've got another great episode here for you folks today. Jilly, what are we diving into? Uh, we're going deep into the, the sea of discomfort, and we yes. are talking about our white privileges and uh, how we're going to start using them to do good, to be intentional as hell with them. That's right. So very serious topic here on our episode today. Like we said last week, we're going to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, so it should be a good one. Hopefully, uh, y'all will stay tuned and listen through to the end. We'll have some good resources for everybody as well. Um, but before we dive into today's topic, Jilly, want to show a little gratitude? Yeah. What are you grateful um, for this week? I mean... To go with our topic, I've been reflecting a lot. I am grateful. It's going to sound weird saying it, but I'm grateful to be white. I didn't realize all of the privileges that I've had until I started hearing about all of the things that the other cultures experience on a daily basis. And, you know, I'm grateful to be me and I, I love the person I am. I love my family. I love where I live. There are so many amazing things that I'm grateful for and... I don't, it sounds weird saying that, but I realize how fortunate and lucky I am to be born into this body, but I'm, I love who I am and I, I'm excited to do this work that is so weird and strange talking about it out loud, but I know it's, it's needed. Um, but yeah, I'm just grateful to be me. In other words, like I recognize that I'm white and think that's the first step in realizing that I do have power. To yeah. help to make change. Yeah. And sorry to get kind of serious. And it felt really weird saying that, but I just, it, that's what I've yeah. been feeling lately. We've, well, we've had an eye opening experience as well. Yeah. Um, and, and I think you and I have talked about it. It sucks that it's taken, you know, 34 and 38 years of our lives to kind of get where we're at today, but it's where we're at. We're making progress. And, you know, so I, I completely understand where you're coming from there. Um, for me, I am grateful for picnics at the park. We had a very, very awesome picnic last night, which was Monday. Uh, this comes out on Thursday, so just a couple days ago. And we got to catch up with some friends that we haven't seen since the whole COVID thing started. And, you know, these are really close friends. Their kids are a little bit older than Lucille, but treat her just, you know, like a brother or sister. And, uh, you know, they had a really great time. The, uh, the park that we went to has animals so we got to see turkeys and goats and pigs and, and lucille was just having a blast but you know more importantly it was it was great to to share a good time and some pizza and cocktails with uh some really close friends so uh i'm definitely grateful that we had a an opportunity to hang out with them and just see them and you know be able to laugh and walk around and just do all the things that we normally would have done it, it it felt like a normal day yeah no it was that was a sweet moment and i've come to this realization i mean through this whole pandemic and just being at home is that it's been really wonderful and i think what makes it so wonderful is the people around us it's honestly i feel like we could live in the beautiful state of hawaii and have these beautiful backdrops of oceans and waterfalls and perfect weather but honestly, it's the people more than the environment, like yeah. the location. It's it's really, we are so fortunate to have amazing friends and family at our fingertips to hang out with when we so choose to. And it's 
it's it's amazing yeah and you know we've we've certainly realized uh, you know what we have you know we obviously don't take anything for granted and this is just another reason why we shouldn't take our family our friends and relationships that we have for granted because when it's taken away from you i mean just look of all the you know the the, the different mental health um I don't want to say problems, but, you know, mental health uh, issues that we're having. And a lot of it's due to lack of con- contact with, with other humans. So, you know, it, it's definitely important. And, you know, it's been eye opening. And we're probably going to use the word eye opening a lot in this podcast. But it was it's been eye opening that, you know, we, we truly miss and, and value our friendships. And that just kind of prove that you know it's just like you know you don't know what you have until it's taken away from you well it's, i mean it's it's true it's crazy but it's true absolutely yeah all right jilly so you want to dive into this uh extremely important topic yeah i know we're kind of getting serious and this needs to be talked about i think that with everything going on to not talk about it and just brush over it it's like there's no going back, honestly. So, and we're all about being intentional with our lives to be happier and healthier. And this fucking has to do with it yeah. because we have to recognize this and stop brushing this topic under the under the rug. And we were, when I grew up, we never talked about race. If we did talk about race, it was very minimal or, you know, it was too uncomfortable. And I'm sure that's very similar in a lot of people's families. And there's a lot of things that I didn't know that other people had to face. And now I feel like I'm growing, you know, I thought I was an empathetic person, but damn, I think my empathy muscle is working on overload right now. Just, Mm -hmm. I've been really diving into podcasts and stories just so I can be better informed about what life was like for them and our history and all that stuff. But, um, I thought it was needed just to talk about what work we are doing and we are doing the work. And the first step is really just recognizing what we have the privileges we have that we were born into. And I have a quote to kind of start us off, if that's cool. Perfect. All right. Privilege exists through systems that individuals are born into and is not something they request. At the same time, there are many actions that privileged individuals can freely take in their daily lives to weaken unjust systems of discrimination and that is exactly why we want to talk about this because we we have power and it it may be and it, of course it's in like the small things the the small actions what you do what mm-hmm. you say and what we bring attention to even our friends and family in our inner circle we can make a change and it just starts with us yeah and i feel like in order to be anti racist and to kind of make a change we have to reflect on our own behaviors and i think that's the that's why I want to do this. It's like this podcast kind of forces me to do the work so that way we can talk about it. And I'm so grateful mm-hmm. that we have this podcast and this platform to kind of do the work and be messy and get uncomfortable. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's it's funny. Like, I don't know why. I mean, we, we've had a lot of events that have occurred in the past, you know, whether it's a police involved shooting um, of, a, of a black person Um I don't know if it's because we've all been on lockdown for so long that it, this is just really, um, you know, surfacing more than I think it has in the past. At least that's the way that I feel. Maybe it's because of the video, which I myself have not watched the video. I, I, I don't want to see a human being, um, you know, suffer, you know, for that long. And, and, you know, maybe it is something I need to watch. Or on the other hand, you know, I think watching those kinds of things also desensitize us to those things and make it normal. I don't know what the if there's a right or wrong answer, but I do know that, um, you know, what had happened was was cold blooded murder, um, you know, and, and it's just a, a terrible incident um, and nobody should ever have to, to go through that. But it's been something that's just been, you know, plaguing the black community for such a long time. And it's really just come to light. And I've really done more reflecting on these types of issues now than I've ever have in the past. And, you know, we're, we're going to talk about white privilege in this episode. And my whole mindset on just that word privilege, I in the past, I, I never really liked that word. And I think it was because it made me feel that because I'm white, it didn't mean that I earned 
anything that I, you know, that I worked hard to achieve. And for some reason, it just never stuck with me. And I was just like privileged. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, I, and maybe it's just, I've just never really taken the time to truly reflect on the advantage I the advantages that I have because of the the color of my skin and also because I'm a male, but you know, that's a completely different conversation. You know, I don't want to, to, to take that away from that, but I mean, there, there's two things that I have. I'm a white male and I that's really part got, of it though. yeah, Your I got defensive about that it, yeah. in the past, but you know, I, it's because I never really reflected on it. Um, so, you know, I, I do understand now that there is a privilege to being white. There is a privilege to being male in in our society so i i don't know why this is different than the past but i do know that i'm very glad that i'm actually reflecting and learning as we had mentioned in our last episode which we were really taking time to do i think it's because there's a lot of content that's at our fingertips now that we can absorb and learn about whereas yeah. before it's you know we what we were told is what we would believe mm-hmm. that was the truth from our teachers from our parents it's like we didn't do our own digging because we believed that story that was right. the narrative that we were always told and we thought that's what it is and now there's so many layers that we're uncovering about our past and our history and how people were treated and just based on the color of their skin it's like we kind of heard their stories but it was very rushed mm-hmm. and very all right that was a phase of life let's keep going and right yeah, I think as I was listening to white privileges and what it what it is, it, it's really the, the moments and things we do every day that we don't even think about that we have those privileges. And that's sure. why I was very curious to look at our own, because if we can recognize our own, then we can communicate this to Lucille and mm-hmm. just make her aware that we have power because of the color of our skin, that That is how the world has become. Right. But we can make change in lessening that. We can lessen racism by lessening our privileges and speaking out against it. Absolutely. And creating more equity with with all people. And um yeah, so let's let's call our let's call out our privileges. Yeah. And and, you know, for me, I really I'm calling out the obvious ones where which weren't so obvious obvious to me in the past. And I know that I still have a lot of reflecting to do just to kind of think of the different scenarios that I'm in in my daily life and how if I was black, you know, how that di- scenario could be different. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll start off with the first one. Um, you know, I've been pulled over quite a few times and, and I'm going to I'm going to break this up into two parts because I'm going to I want to talk about police officers, but then I also want to talk about the court system. Um, so I've been pulled over a lot and I haven't been pulled over and I'm going to knock on some wood here probably in 10 years now. So this is a lot in my twenties. Um, and even as I got my license, you know, it was speeding, you know, I've been pulled over speeding, you know, issued citations. Um, I have been a couple times just let off with a warning. I can recall one time that I was actually leaving work because I wasn't feeling well and I had a doctor's appointment and and I was, I left work late and I was just speeding to get to my doctor's appointment. I got pulled over, um, you know, told the cop my story and he, you know, without question just said, okay, you know, drive careful. Um, I've also been pulled over where I've probably had too many drinks um, to, to drive. I guess you could say that I would be legally intoxicated. And yes, I, I did get a, a DUI 11 years ago. Um, but there were several occasions where I either just got a speeding ticket or a warning. Um, you know, and I, and I now think to myself, you know, would I've gotten off with no citation if I was black? You know, would I... You know, so, you know, those are the privileges that, you know, I feel like I'm getting when it comes to to police officers. But then, you know, I I look at the court system and it's the same thing. You know, I've never gotten any points of my license and I've probably been to court 12 or 13 times for traffic violations. Again, I was also arrested for a DUI. I got probation before judgment. I hit my neighbor's mailbox one night and 
didn't report it to my neighbor. So they called the police and, you know, the next morning they, you know, came and he issued me a citation. I went to court, got a probation before judgment, and then the various speeding tickets that I've had uh, probation before judgment. Um, so again, I wondered to myself, you know, if I was black, would I have gotten probation before judgment in any one of those situations or in all those situations? So that's what I really want. Those are kind of the more the, I think the obvious ones, but you know, the ones that I wanted to start off with. Um, how about you, babe? So I did get some help just because I, I wanted to really dive deep into the everyday thing. So I, and I'll share the resource I used. So some of the ones that that really spoke out to me that I do every day is like, I can use a check or credit card or cash and I can count on my skin color not to work against the appearance of my financial reliability. Mm -hmm. Like, and I've heard so many stories about when black people have gone to pay or they've written notes like on the back of checks. Like that was, this was a story from one of our um, leaders in, in our County for school. He was sharing a story about how like the owner wrote like, black on the back of their check and this was probably like 10 or 15 years ago but it was to make just to to recognize that this check had come from a black person and the implications that go with that if they were to judge like oh my goodness exactly like these are things that i did not know and and there were so so many stories but um i'm never asked to speak for all of the people of my racial group right i don't know if you've ever noticed that where we we might go to one of our black friends and be like, I don't like, tell me about what you guys believe. It's like, it's not a we, like they're, they are black, but they are an individual as well. Right. I think right. different people from different cultures, we, we talk to one and I know I have probably done that. I think I tend to ask them about their culture and they're like, but this is me. Like I am an individual, but right. I'm in this culture. But just because I say that doesn't mean I'm a representative for my whole race. Right. right. Um, uh, if my day, week, or year is going bad, I don't, I, I need not ask of each negative episode or situation whether it had racial overtones. So there's no issue of race that comes to mind at all when mm-hmm. I think about anything, struggles, or bad times that I've had in my life. Um, here's one. It's, I can be late to a meeting without having the lateness reflect on my race. And I am a... I have witnessed it because witnessed this because when I went to I went to Bowie State University, which is historically black college, and I loved Bowie State. I played softball there. I got a full ride. It was amazing. But I have heard this so many times about what they call black people time. It's right. like if they were late and it was just, you know, it's something that I'm like, oh, that's just what people say. But now I'm like, shit, like there are so many times that I've heard these terms and yeah. slangs and thinking, oh, this is normal, but it's fucking not normal. No, it's 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 horrible. Um if Lucille goes to school, I know she's going to get books and texts and things with our race on it. Mm-hmm. There's no question that she's not going to fit in, that she's not going to feel like she belongs, that she's not going to see people that look just like her. Like I have no doubt of that. Um I know I'm just reading a bunch, but right. I had um, here's one I didn't even think about. I can swear or dress in secondhand glow and secondhand clothes without having people attribute these choices to like poverty or my race. Mm-hmm. It's it's like these tiny little things that I've taken for granted for so many years. Even just walking in my neighborhood, I can walk in any suburban neighborhood and feel completely safe. Right. I feel okay. I don't feel like I'm constantly looking or making sure I'm okay. Even being in my house, sleeping in my bed at night, I am completely safe in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I feel like we could move anywhere we wanted to and we would be, we would be okay. Right. Like that. I don't worry about that. And these are things that, you know, people of different cultures and colors that they worry. Like, I don't know. I've just heard so many stories. This is just a little bit of some of the, the privileges that I've noticed that I have. And again, if to me, it's just, Things that I have taken for granted for for so long that I never really understood and realized that this is what privilege is. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you go through so many different emotions when you start to think about these things. I mean, just you reading off some of those, it it, it makes you stick to your stomach. You know, it makes you, um, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm just feeling all kinds of different things, which I have been for for the last, you know, week or two since this whole thing is, is, you know, 
opened our eyes. Um, but you know, again, it, it's just just thinking about what we can do to to change the narrative and more importantly create change positive change um you know and it it is having conversations with friends um i i've seen for for every bad and just horrible conversation that's been on social media i've actually seen really productive conversation and and people trying to make sense of things and, and and i think people are more open now than they ever have been again it could be because of the the coronavirus it could be because of the video um you know just seeing what what happened there um but i mean it's happening i i really feel this time more than any of the the past times that you know people are looking to make a change and and are reflecting and you know are starting to understand the the a, the, the privilege that, that white folks have had in this country since the beginning of time, but B, mm -hmm. just that the amount of racism that still exists today. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, I feel like I'm just brushing the surface as I'm diving into mm -hmm. these stories and just kind of relearning our history. It's really what we're doing. Like, yeah, we were done a tremendous disservice by not hearing this. And I think that's why I want to educate myself now. So I have a way that I can deliver this in a way that that Lucille is brought up in that environment mm -hmm. where she knows it. She can we can start practicing it and showing her and talking about it. And I think that's, you know, I've heard discussions where, you know, you may not hear racist comments your whole life, but, but you can still practice racism. It's Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where we can't not talk about it. Like we have to be aware and talk about these situations because in child development, like as kids are growing up, they are already categorizing and putting things in, into groups. So if we don't talk about it, Lucille could be starting to categorize things and sorting things based on where she sees people. And right. they gave a great example of like, let's say our whole community is white, which we 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 have a pretty diverse community like you know we mm -hmm. um of different colors around here and people and but they said like if you have an all white neighborhood and you go to a store and you see a black person that is working and your ch your children are already assimilating that like oh this person is meant to work and help people and help me and serve me they don't live in my neighborhood mm -hmm. they don't do this like just being open to having those conversations and acknowledging it instead of the silence, I think, I mean, just like how we model counting and ABCs, it's like, mm -hmm. this is the shit we have to talk about now. It's like, oh, let's look at this person. Let's talk about what makes them them. And, you know, let's talk about where they're from and, you know, start introducing things they might eat. Like, it's like these little things that we can start doing to educate our children now and yeah, I think you're you're exactly right. I think it starts with not being silent and having those conversations. I, I think a lot of conversations, you said at the very beginning that you didn't talk about race in your family that much because it was uncomfortable, you know, growing up. Um, and I, I feel like that's a that's a big part of it is is being comfortable. It, it, it's funny. And I'm kind of correlating this with it, talking about sex you know it's it's a uncomfortable topic to talk with your kids or your teens about um but the reasons that we have so many teenage pregnancies and stuff like that is because we're not having those conversations but and it's the same thing you, you can say about racism and white privilege we're not having those conversations so it's being swept under the rug and it's not being given the um you know the the platform it needs in order for us to to make an, an effective change but you know again i hope that that's changing right now well let's normalize it let's yeah. start normalizing these uncomfortable concepts i mean even sex can be an uncomfortable conversation for sure. someone you know i feel like if we start when we're young or even when we're 34 like now's better than never right and i, I hope that we're able, like you said, to teach Lucille to to have these conversations and, and keep it normal and say, hey, it's going to be uncomfortable for some people to have these conversations, but it's important that we do have them and try to understand, um, you know, some of the things that 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 black people are going through and, and really using 
our white privilege to try to make a change. Yeah, it's it's weird when I think about how we teach her. It's like, I don't want Lucille to go around and be like, well, I have white privilege and here's how I'm going to help you. But I can totally see like kids taking it literal. But mm -hmm. I think just speaking, using the vocabulary in a way that you want your kid to use it, um, which is going to be tricky. I, this this sounds simple, but I, I want to be intentional mm -hmm. with speaking about it. Now, how's it going to go? I have no fucking idea. Yeah. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, I mean, th this is an issue that's been around for for centuries and it's not going to go away overnight but we can really do our part to really start the dialogue and and try to help people understand um you know white privilege white supremacy and racism and and really use that that knowledge to to you know create change and and, and i think it starts with creating change within um the systems that govern us and, and really, you know, and I think that's what this movement's doing, you know, the, the black lives matter movement and the defund the police movement. Um, it's people are calling for a change and they, they recognize that the institutions that run this country, that run our States, that run our local jurisdictions are a big part of the problem. Yeah. So, um, if any of you are listening to this and you're like, well, I don't understand white supremacy. I don't like when I first heard these terms, I was just like, I'm ignorant. Well, you think white supremacy, you think Nazis and yeah. stuff like that. You think of and, and, and you think, yeah, yeah you think of the, the Even racist, racism. Yeah. You yeah. think of extreme people like calling out or the KKK. Like it, this is like subtlety thing. Like but we all practice it probably unconsciously and we don't even realize it. And now I'm ready to get conscious and intentional and really do the work. And Right now, I'm listening to one podcast a week. Like, it's something so small. Like, you don't have to go out and research all these things. Like, just find a mode of education that makes sense for you, a way that you would enjoy consuming it, and even do it with your kids if they're old enough to do it with them. And have these conversations with them when you feel it's most appropriate. And there's probably never going to feel like, honestly, in a quote-unquote appropriate time. Right. You're just going to have to do it. And it's, again... We don't know what we're doing and if it's the right way. But no, you know what? No. We're trying. We're educating we're educating ourselves the best we can and then we're sharing it yeah. on here. Again, Lucille may consume these podcasts when she's older and she's gonna be like, Wow, you guys uh like you guys sound really like off. Like what are you yeah, guys thinking, yeah. talking about? It's like this is important that we share this because we are I mean we walk the talk. Mm -hmm. I mean, did I say that right? <laughs> we walk the like, talk. Like, I feel like you whatever I speak and put onto the atmosphere, like, I have to follow through with mm -hmm. it. And that's kind of like a promise to us to continue to do this work. And that's I, been a great thing about this podcast is that, you know, we're, we talk about it and, you know, we're talking about it because we do it. Or we're in the process yeah. of doing it and it's chaotic. I mean, and, right. I mean, we, we might not yeah. even have all the right answers now and we may be full of shit right now. Who knows? I mean, but we, you know, we do know that um, there is definitely something, you know, wrong in, in society right now. And, and, you know, there, there needs to be change and we're willing to put in the time, the work and, and really try to understand how we can, use this situation and, and try to better, you know, better our neighbors, better our friends, better our families, better society as a whole. Yeah. And I think in the beginning when this all happened, I was just very overwhelmed. Like I have no idea what to do, like no idea. And I think that's another reason why I wanted to talk about this is since we are about simplifying things, like we're just breaking it down to just educating yourself mm -hmm. That's it. And then just recognizing your power in all of this, how you can make a change. And it's it's that simple, but it, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of courage. It takes you know, a lot of time. I, yeah, this yeah. is, again, this, like Nick said, this is not something that's going to happen overnight. There's a lot of things I have to unlearn and be even that's more. That's the tough part. Yeah, unlearning. unlearning. And just being even more mindful about things that I say or thoughts that immediately come to my head that I didn't realize before, before I speak it out. I'm like, wow, that's probably not the most appropriate thing I should say. Or, you know, I, I think there, I think everyone has had some type of racism that's popped in their head automatically because yeah. their environments, like yeah. if, you know, it's just one of those things. And I, 
I think the biggest thing that I'm learning is not to be defensive and say, I didn't know, I didn't mm-hmm. mean, it's just like, no, that's wrong. That yeah. thought was wrong and I'm I'm ready to change it and recognize that I've made mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there anything else you wanted to, to dive into before we go into to resources here? No. And no. Um, our resources, I really didn't write anything about our resources. I just listed the two resources that I think we both kind of, I don't know if you used it, but mm-hmm. I definitely used it. There are two articles for our resources, and both of them are by Peggy M- McIntosh. Um, and you may have heard these. I feel like they're very popular at the moment. One of the articles is called White Privilege, an Account to Spend. And the other article is called White Privilege, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack. Yes. These articles are not that super long. They are they were extremely helpful. They were. In... Re- understanding what white privilege is and not getting defensive about it if that makes sense yeah like really understanding what it is and recognizing it in your own life she gives great examples of her own because she is a white woman of her own white privileges and she shares them and it really helps you break it down to the core level of your life and understanding it yeah no it was very helpful in my reflection and i'm going to continue to read and reread that article those articles uh, to, to help through this process and, and, and consume any other content that's out there that, that'll help me, you know, truly reflect and understand, um, how to affect change during this, this time. So, um, quote of the day there, Jilly. Quote of the day is from the article. So it's from All Peggy right. McIntosh, Mac, McIntosh, I can speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We all have souls and identities. But at the same time, we were born with social locations and group identities that shape us and easily keep us separated from other people, Mm. especially within institutions. I find that working against racism racism, mends the social fabric, heals the soul and reduces fear, isolations and alienation. It makes things better for everybody. Awesome. Good stuff, Jilly. All right. And take action challenge. Your take action challenge is to recognize your power in this situation, recognize your privilege, and then start there. I think recognizing it in yourself is like the first step and even making a change. Good stuff, Jilly. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. You know, we really hope that you enjoyed this one. And, you know, if you do like this, please do us a favor and, and really help us spread this message. You can do this by writing a review or, more importantly, sharing this episode with a friend. Uh, and remember that sharing sparks a conversation. Conversation leads to action. And action is how we're able to live a happy and intentional as hell lifestyle. And I feel like that's more important than ever in this episode. So we want to thank you all for listening today. And we will see you again next week. Talk to you later, guys.